there are two useful features uh, that you may not be aware of related to plotting and selecting channels. Here I have an example where I've selected uh, five channels corresponding with a single source. You can see the evoked response for all five channels. We have this waterfall plot here where if you put a number here, it's now going to separate the different channels of data by the uh, amount indicated. So on this scale, you can see this maximum response. It's about 0.8. So I'm going to put a separation of, of one unit on this scale. And you see it nicely makes a waterfall plot so you can easily distinguish all of the channels. If you go back to zero, it collapses everything. And this is particularly useful for the next feature, which is selecting multiple channels of data. So you know that if you click around, uh, you get different channels of data. But what if you want to compare, in this case, the left hemisphere with the right hemisphere? If you shift click, you can now get to select all of the channels. And so you could go around shift clicking multiple uh, different channels all over the place. Now when you use waterfall, I put a one here, and you can see it becomes much more useful for uh, separating out multiple channels of data. So you can just select one to go back, and now zero brings us back again. Another useful feature is the fixed data range. So you may have noticed when you select different channels, it auto scales. But what if you want to fix the scale as you select different channels of data? You can say fix the range, and we can specify the range here, so minus 0.2 to 1. Okay. And now, let's say minus 0.2 to 0.8. Now when we go around to different channels, it's going to keep that scale, which makes it nice for being able to easily visualize the relative amplitudes of different channels. Okay, so we just showed you three useful features, waterfall, fixed plot range, and selecting multiple channels.